Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on uh, rheumatoid arthritis. In this video, what we're going to discuss is the structure of the synovial membrane of a synovial joint. Okay, so the structure for this video is we're going to start off by revisiting the structure of a synovial joint quickly, and then what we'll do is look in detail at the structural sorry, at the structure of the uh, synovial membrane, okay? And the synovial membrane is also known as the synovium, for short, okay? So the synovium means the synovial membrane. It's kind of like uh, you could refer to the endothelium as an endothelial membrane, uh, but often people will just call it an endothelium. So synovial membrane is equal to a synovium. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at a synovial joint at first. So, a synovial joint is a, a movable joint, so it's a bridging of two bones. So let's start with the two bones here. Okay, so here are two bones that we want uh, to join together. And then the first thing that has to happen is you have to put a layer of hyaline cartilage over the surfaces of the bone. So bone does not touch bone. Instead, the bones have a layer of hyaline cartilage over them, over their terminal ends, and it's this hyaline cartilage that will articulate with the hyaline cartilage of the other bone. Okay, so this is hyaline cartilage, and I might just colour it in. Right, so I think I'll colour it in in turquoise. So, here in turquoise is the hyaline cartilage which covers the terminal ends of these bones. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have a joint capsule covering the entire thing. Ooh, the god, that's smudged horribly. Okay, there we go. There's the um, <laughs> cartilage. And now here is this hyaline cartilage over this bone. Right, okay, so you're now going to have a joint capsule over the surface of this entire thing. Okay, so the joint capsule consists of two layers. The first layer it consists of is the synovial membrane, which I'm going to show here in orange. Okay, so in orange this is the synovial membrane, and then here is the synovial membrane on this side. Right, so this is where the synovial membrane is, it's part of the joint capsule. Now, the synovial membrane is a very thin little uh, structure, okay, so this isn't a very rigid uh, covering for our joint. So you also have an outer layer known as the fibrous uh, membrane, okay, which is made up of very dense connective tissue, and this is the hard bit. This is what is actually containing everything in and uh, protecting the joint. Okay, so the whole thing, both layers together, both the synovial membrane with this fibrous layer together, uh, these are known as the um, uh, joint capsule, okay. So the joint capsule consists of an inner synovial membrane and an outer fibrous layer. Right, okay, and inside this uh, cavity, okay, which is contained within the joint capsule, you then have what's known as the articular cavity. So this cavity is called the articular cavity. And this articular cavity is full of synovial fluid, okay? And the synovial membrane's job is to secrete the components of this synovial fluid, and we'll see two of the components of uh, the synovial fluid in a moment. Okay, so uh, that overall completes the structure of the synovial joint then. It's this articulation between these two bones where you firstly cover the terminal ends of the bones in hyaline cartilage, and then you put a joint capsule which holds the two of them together and has this synovial fluid in the articular cavity which lubricates the two uh, ends of the bones as they move over one another. So this is synovial fluid. Right, okay, so uh, let's now uh, discuss the synovial uh, membrane in uh, more detail. Okay, so uh, basically the synovial membrane, if we now zoom in on this thing that previously I've just shown in orange here, it consists of two major layers, okay? So here's the apical face which faces into the articular cavity, okay? So here are these two major layers. So this is what previously we'd just shown as an orange line. So the whole thing here 
is now just this orange line. So we're looking at what is actually making up this orange line, what makes up this synovium. Okay, so it consists of two layers. This top layer here is known as the intima, okay? And this is the layer which is actually in contact with the synovial fluid in the uh, articular cavity. Okay, and we'll see that the cells which are going to secrete the components of the synovial fluid are within this intima. Okay, and then this lower layer down here is what's known as the subintima of the uh, synovial membrane. So this is the subintima. Okay, right, so let's start by looking at the structure of the intima. So basically you have a layer of cells which faces into the articular cavity, and let me draw some of these in now here. Okay, so here they are, and they have their bases towards uh, the um, articular cavity like this. Okay, and you have two types of cells that face into the uh, synovial uh, fluid. Okay, so I've drawn two that are a similar type here, and now here's the second type here. So here's its nucleus, and then it's going to have very prominent mitochondria, so I'll draw some mitochondria in here. So, these cells which actually face into the articular cavity, these are known as intima cells, okay? So these are intima cells. So all of these cells that I've drawn so far are intima cells. Now, as I've said, there are two types of intima cells. This type over here, which I drew second, is what is known as the type A intima cells. And the type which I drew first, these are the type B intima cells. Okay, so we'll start off with the type B intima cells. So these type B intima cells are what are known as fibroblasts. Okay, so they're a type of cell known as a fibroblast. And fibroblasts are cells which are secreting connective tissue. So these are the cells which are secreting things into uh, the articular cavity. They're secreting the components of the synovial fluid, which are connective tissue. Okay, so one of the key components that these type B intima cells are secreting into the synovial fluid is a molecule known as hyaluronan. Okay, uranan. So hyaluronan, also known as hyaluronate uh, or hyaluronic acid. So it has a lot of names. So it can also be called hyaluronate or indeed as hyaluronic acid. And you'll see why it's an acid in a moment. Okay, so this is a great big polysaccharide. So I want to show you which uh, monosaccharides this polysaccharide is made up of. Okay, so it's actually a polymer of disaccharides, so you repeat a disaccharide over and over again. So let's discuss the components of this uh, disaccharide, and then I'll draw it all out and show you how we'll polymerize it together. Okay, right, so we firstly need to start off with the structure of D-glucopyranose, because both of the monosaccharides which we're going to use to construct a hyaluronic acid molecule are going to be based on the structure of D-glucopyranose. Okay, so this is cyclic glucose. So often people will just call this glucose. They won't put the D there and they won't put the pyranose. Strictly speaking, you need both the D and the pyranose. The pyranose tells you that it's in a cycle. Glucose can exist in two forms. It can exist in a linear form and then in a cyclic form. Now, the structure that most people are used to is the cyclic form. Um, but the cyclic form isn't, strictly speaking, actually called glucose. Strictly speaking, it's called glucopyranose. In addition, strictly speaking, we do need to tell ourselves which optical isomer we're talking about. So we need the D there as well. So, let me draw the structure of D-glucopyranose. So, this is the structure you'll be used to thinking of as glucose, but strictly speaking, glucose means the linear structure, not the cyclic structure like this. So, here is this six-membered ring, and then the uh, sixth carbon up here, okay, comes off coming out of the page towards us. So imagine that this ring is in uh, the plane, okay? So we have one oxygen, five carbons. This sixth carbon comes off up here, 
and it's coming out of the page towards us and this is important really important the optical isomerism matters this is a chiral center it has a hydrogen coming off it and a uh, sixth carbon molecule coming off it and it can either the sixth carbon molecule can either come out of the page towards us or go into the page away from us and then the hydrogen will go in whichever uh, direction is left now in d glucopyranose this sixth carbon is going to come out of the page yet towards us, and this sixth carbon has an alcohol group off it. And we're drawing a skeletal structure clearly here. Okay, so in L-glucopyranose, this sixth carbon will go into the page away from us. So it is important to stress that this is D-glucopyranose. Now the main form of glucopyranose, which is expressed in cells, which is present in cells, is D-glucopyranose. So often people will just drop the D. However, strictly speaking, you should make sure you know what you're talking about, and therefore you should put this D here to tell yourself that this carbon is coming out of the page towards us rather than going into the page away from us. And if you're talking about the form where it is going into the page away from us, that would be L-glucopyranose. Now, uh, the other structures are you off this... Um, uh, fourth carbon here, you then have another alcohol group and a hydrogen coming off here. Now the alcohol group goes into the page away from us this time and the hydrogen comes out of the page towards us. Okay, off this um, third carbon down here, again you have an alcohol group and hydrogen. The alcohol comes out of the page towards us and uh, the hydrogen goes into the page away from us. And you might think, well, where's all the information about this optical isomerism coming from? Well, this is all contained in the fact that it is glucose. So glucose has a very specific uh, optical isomerism of these alcohol groups. Specifically, in this position, this position, and this position, they're all set, basically. Other um, aldohexoses, such as mannose, uh, or galactose, they all have different arrangements of these, so uh, that's where the optical isomerism of this is taken care of. So it's all set in glucose, so specifically these three here are set. So again, off this second carbon, you have an alcohol group and a hydrogen. The alcohol group goes into the page away from us, and the hydrogen comes out of the page towards us. So that is all set in glucose. As long as you're talking about glucose, that will be the case. If you change it and start talking about mannose or galactose, these will change, basically. Their optical isomerism will change. Okay, then off this first carbon, it's not set. We don't know whether the alcohol group comes out of the page towards us or into the page away from us. So you often put a squiggly line like that to show that it can either go into the page or out of the page. And then obviously the hydrogen that also comes off this first carbon will take the leftover slot. Okay, so if you just were asked to draw the structure of D-glucopyranose, this is what you'd have to draw. If you were told to draw the structure of alpha d glucopyranose okay then that would tell you exactly uh, which direction this alcohol group comes at, uh, goes basically so in alpha d glucopyranose the alpha sorry the alcohol group will go into the page away from us on this uh, first carbon and the hydrogen will come uh, out of the page towards us okay and then the other isomer here okay uh, is beta D glucopyranose. Okay, and in beta D glucopyranose, the alcohol group off the first carbon will come out of the page towards us. Okay, right, so this first carbon here, okay, let me do it in color, let me circle it in colors. This first carbon here is known as the anomeric carbon. Okay, and these two possibilities, these two optical isomers, are known as the anomers. Okay, so the anomers of D glucopyranose are alpha D glucopyranose and beta D glucopyranose. So these two molecules here are the two anomers of D glucopyranose. So it has a special word. Optical isomerism on this first carbon has a special name, and it's uh, they're referred to as these anomers. Okay, so D-glucopyranose has these two anomers. You have alpha D-glucopyranose and beta D-glucopyranose. And you could, of course, imagine that you would also have alpha L-glucopyranose and beta L-glucopyranose, which would be where this uh, 
uh, sixth carbon here goes into the page uh, rather than out of the page, as is the case in D. But D is the normal form that you have in cells. Okay, and as I say, the optical isomerism of these three would, if you changed those, um, that would change it from being glucose and it would change into a different monosaccharide. So as long as we're talking about gluco here, uh, we um, need those alcohol groups in that those fixed positions. Right, okay, so this is the structure of D-glucopyranose. Okay, so in the next video, what we'll do is we'll see uh, the structure of a few monosaccharides which are based on this molecule. Specifically, we'll see the structure of D-glucuronic acid, and we'll also see the structure of N-acetyl D-glucosamine. Okay, and we'll see how these can be bound together to make a disaccharide, which then you can polymerize to make hyaluronic acid.